Hey, welcome to the Yermi Roundtable. Today's the 8th of June, 2022. Um, I have a special guest, Hamachu. Uh, Hamachu runs our trading group seven, but um, many people don't know that he's a chartered market technician and pretty good with technical analysis. And back in the day, uh, John Sarkat wrote an article about Hamachu and uh, for Stocks and Commodities magazine and, and deemed you the calendar king. So today we're going to start off with some technical analysis, but before we do, uh, the normal disclosure that Airmere is not a broker dealer or investment advisor for educational purposes only. Options, futures, bonds, and currencies involve risks that are not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. If you want to read the whole disclosure, just pause the recording and go to the bottom of any of our web pages. And then we also want to give credit to any of these providers Option Net Explorer, Option View, Think for Swim, Interactive Brokers. Now, they all provide services for us, so you may see screenshots, and we appreciate all that they do to help us be better traders. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, Himanshu, and then welcome. It's good to have you back on the roundtable. Oh, thank you very much, and thank you for having me again. I enjoy um, coming over here and really screwing up all the attendees in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> okay, you're going to mess with our minds today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually recognize a few names whose minds I have already messed up uh, pretty well, uh, and they are actually enjoying it. So that's good. <laughs> good. So welcome, everybody. We are going to talk about technical analysis. I have actually a massive PowerPoint presentation slide for you to watch as I go through this. And it is so massive that it has got only one slide on it. That is what I want you all to do today. I'm not going to be showing you too many things. I just want you to listen. And I have a feeling that if I minimize this, you won't, you guys won't. This is what I want all you guys to focus on. The sound of my voice, slowly boring you to death, pounding the same thing over and over again into your heads. Because that's the only way you will get it. <laughs> <laughs> repetition repetition so technical analysis right listen to this first of all why does it work by the way how many of you actually believe that it works i know there are a lot of fundamental traders who literally look down at technicians because they think that we are full of crap to put it in you know simpler terms so whether you believe that it works or not, okay, somebody actually answered me. So MJ says it works. Yes, I agree. MJ, thank you for siding with me. So I agree now, too. Yeah, okay. There's, there's, there's two, two on your side. Two on my side. That's that's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> so now, why does it work? And this is for the for those of you who did not agree with me. I have to now prove to you that it works because it has got nothing to do with the stocks. It has got nothing to do with, with whatever it is that you are looking at out there. It is all about us and how we think. I don't know whether it makes any um, sense or not, but to give you a very simple example, we a lot of traders will say that fundamental analysis is the way to go, right? But if you look at fundamental, let's just look at a very simple part of fundamental analysis. One of the, one of the parameters of fundamental analysis is something called the PE ratio, right? The price to earnings ratio. Anybody aware of that? Of course. Okay. Somebody mentioned yes. MJ says yes, that's good. So then we look at the whole fundamental and uh, the price ratio thing and we ultimately find out that when the price ratio is low, that is when we should buy the stock. So in that case, are we not using technical analysis on a fundamental parameter? Did that make sense? Or have I confused yeah. everybody in the very first six minutes? <laughs> Which would be quite a record for me actually. <laughs> So, 
technical analysis works, even fundamental analysts actually use technical analysis without even really knowing that they are using it. Then let me show you or talk about something else. A long time ago when we had the floor, remember we had the big floor and there will be traders trading. Uh, yes, as price moment is technical analysis, correct. But price moment is not the only thing. In the old days when everybody used to be on the floor, they had something called a squawk box. And people outside would be listening to the volume levels of the inside of the floor. And when the volume levels went up, people outside would then do something, either buy or sell, whatever the case may be. Anybody heard of this? Yeah, I actually heard it. I uh, went to a Sheridan thing a long time ago at the CBOE. We were correct. in there. And then all of a sudden, the volume on the floor just started really getting higher and higher. And there was some news event going on. That is correct. And when the minute the volume level starts moving up, if you were to put on a strangle on say SPY or SPX, or if you knew what stock, like say something was happening with Twitter and you were to put a strangle on Twitter, meaning buy a call and sell, uh, sell uh, buy a call and buy a put out of the money calls and puts, chances are that before the end of the day, you will make some money and occasionally a lot of money. So that too would be considered technical analysis. We are looking at some parameter, in this case, noise. And when the noise goes up, depending on what we are hearing, you know, we could even hear the word Twitter, somebody bending it out in there, uh, we do something. Or if you don't want to worry about individual stocks, if Twitter goes up, probably the whole of NASDAQ will go up anyway. Just buy a strangle on the queues. It will still work out more often than not. So that too is technical analysis. So even though a lot of people keep on saying that technical analysis is you know, just woo woo, <laughs> as some of them actually say, especially some fundamental traders, but they themselves are also using technical analysis on fundamental parameters. And this proves that technical analysis works. So, over the next five, seven, 10 minutes, I am merely going to show you one thing that I look at in charts and that you can look at in charts. And this is literally an entire trading system all by itself. I've actually taught this to multiple people and they have done nothing else except this because some of them are busy with other things. And not one of them have come to me after I taught it to them and told me that I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> Many have, but none of the ones to whom I taught this particular strategy. So I'm going to now move over to price. And here I'm going to show you something and I want you to then download this recording from the Aeromir site and treasure it for the rest of your lives. Because if you follow the rules here, you will make money, guaranteed. Since I'm not selling anything, I can make guarantees. So we are looking at Tesla. And what I want you to find is something called an inside bar, okay? So now let me explain to you what an inside bar is. An inside bar is a bar where the entire bar from top to bottom is within the previous bar. So this guy here is an inside bar. Then let us go see, this guy is an inside bar. It's completely within this bar. Uh, what am I looking at here? Tesla. See, this guy is almost completely an inside bar. Now, there are multiple definitions, or at least two definitions of inside bar, where one states that the entire bar should be within the previous bar, but some people sort of modify it slightly and say that I want 
the body, the entire body should be within the body of the previous bar. Both are right. Look at them both. It's even better because now you will get more trades than otherwise. Tom, oh, NJ is saying, is it just me or is the screen fuzzy? It's a little bit fuzzy, yeah. Really? Maybe it's Maybe. Windows 11, I don't know. I mean, we can st I can still read the numbers, but it's not sharp. Oh, well, let me make this a little bit bigger. Maybe then it will help. Well, the, the chart's okay. That's easy to find. But like all the numbers, like the price is changing and toss those. Uh... Oh, I see. Okay. Well, we are not. Uh, that's the one good thing about this particular strategy. Don't bother with all that stuff anyway. Yeah. So where were we? We were looking at the, the inside bar, right? So we have a really good inside bar right here. The entire bar is within the previous bar. Now the inside bar denotes what is called uncertainty. In other words, the market as a whole does not really know which way Tesla is going to go. We also know that prior to this inside bar showing up, Tesla was in a downtrend, right? Everybody with me? How many of you can recognize a trend when they see one? Yep. If you don't recognize one, then you just, now you can, because I just showed you what a downtrend looks like. <clears throat> so whenever you see this, so we are in a trend, we now get an inside bar. This could mean two things. This means, well, first we have this uncertainty as far as Tesla is concerned, the market as a whole or the players as a whole do not really know which way Tesla is going to go. This happens, this bar happens because of multiple reasons, but the major reason why this bar happens is because the big boys are taking profits. You know, a $1,100 stock it's not little people like you and me who are selling thousands of shares of Tesla, right? It's, it's Bill Gates. Yeah, it's Bill Gates and maybe Elon Musk himself, <laughs> for all we know. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and JP Morgan and Chase and all, all the big boys are involved when you see massive volume and a downturn. And then you see this. This denotes indecision. All the big boys are also now like, hmm, are we done or should we continue? But we really don't care about what they think or what happens next. All we are saying is this is an inside bar. There is indecision. Therefore, when a decision is finally made, it's going to move one way or the other big time. So what you do is this is an inside bar. So you, all you have to do is buy a strangle. So you will go to this high at 771.39 is the high, no high is 769 here. So you will buy the 770 call and the low is 719. So you will buy the 720 put expiring 30 days, three to four weeks up. Now look what happened here. The puts made you a ton of money, right? It was an out of the money put at 715 and prices went all the way down to 615, 620, 618. The put made you money. The call completely lost the money, but the put has made you so much money that all in all, you are still positive. Over here, you now take the put off you lock in your profits and now this happens. And if this continues, maybe our call will start making money too. It actually did make a little bit of money because the prices did go above. But right now because of theta, so there are times when your put will make money, you will exit the trade, then the prices will reverse and even your call will make money. And hell, even if you don't lose any money on your call side, that's good enough, right? 
And hold on, let me see. Somebody's uh, Kiran is asking: Is this applicable to any time frame of the chart? Oh yes, it is applicable to any time frame of the chart. But my point then would be: Would you trade Tesla on a five-minute chart? This is Tesla on a five-minute chart, and this is today. See, it is already going up, 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 up. We haven't had any. Now here is more, more or less an inside bar, or this would be considered an inside bar. It's completely within this one. Now this is definitely an inside bar. And if we go buy a put at 7.45 and buy a call at 7.45, you are literally buying a straddle here instead of a strangle. Now it may go up or down, but also it depends on how far out you are. This is a five minute chart. And if you were to buy something a week out, then it is very possible that one or the uh, of the two might make you money. So yes, you can do it over here as well. But I personally prefer, because I'm essentially a lazy bum, to put it in extremely mild terms. If you ask my wife, she will use some rather strong adjectives besides bum. But this is a weekly chart, right? Look at this. This is still Tesla. This is an inside bar. My call got triggered at 870 and prices went all the way to 894. Then later, my put also got triggered at 798 or say 795. And that's put from 795, it went to 539. Can you imagine where the value of my put is? If I had bought a put that was say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks out, two months out. Now here is the fun part. Everybody knows that I am a calendar trader. I trade calendars, right? So on this day, this Friday, the week of 111 of this year, if I were to buy a call at 870, eight weeks out, and a put at say 800 or 795, eight weeks out, as Tesla, just waffles around, it doesn't do much. I am now selling calls against my long call and selling puts against my long put. In other words, I now have a double calendar. Even though I started with a strangle, I have a double calendar and I am selling something only a week out. A week later, I am rolling it forward, both of them, my calls and my puts, and still making money. This week, I thought my calls will make me money or my short calls will lose money, but no, that didn't happen. Over here, I'm thinking that my uh, short calls, long puts will put, long puts will make money and my short puts will start losing money, which, it, which is precisely what happened. But the next week, everything went back to normal. I am now making money on my short calls and my short puts. Nothing much is happening to my long calls and puts. So this one two, three, and four weeks, I actually made money on my short calls and puts as well. Then this starts heading down. I get out of my short put, leave my long call on, long call and my short call. So I have a long call calendar, but only an individual long put. So that calendar continues and this put just explodes in value. And when I say explodes in value, you can go into option net, option net uh, explorer and check this out for yourself. This put, this 795 put that you bought for X dollars is probably close to like 5X or 6X by the time this happens. Somebody has a question. Uh, oh, okay, ignore my question. It is being answered right now. MJ, you should know by now. I always answer all your questions. 
no, you do not sell ATM. These are both out of the money. So let me uh, make this bigger. Maybe then it will be easier to see. So this is an inside bar, which denotes indecision. In other words, people as a whole are not sure which way Tesla is going to move. Maybe some news came out. In fact, a few days later, earnings are supposed to come out. And maybe that's why this is happening. So since this is the inside bar, you will go to the high of the bar and the low of the bar, and you will buy a call and a put six to eight weeks out. That's called a strangle. You are buying a strangle. And then another small bar happens. In other words, there is still indecision. So we might as well as make use of that fact and now convert our strangle into a double calendar by selling a call and selling a put against our long call and the long put. Did that make sense? Elena has a question. Do I still pay attention to IV when you open the trade? Are there any IV conditions that you skip this? Uh, no, I actually rarely look at the IV. Because remember, when you buy long calls and long puts, your Vega is positive. So if it drops like a rock as it did, your IV is going to help you anyway. If it does go up, yeah, your IV will work against you, but not by much. And because you are converting one side into a calendar, okay, well, in the beginning, we converted both sides into a calendar, but when this started happening, we are removing the calendar on the put side by just removing the short put. We still have the long put sitting there. But over here, we still have a call calendar, which is also making us money as we continue to roll forward. Everybody with me so far? And there is silence. <laughs> Deafening silence. I, being a very positive dude, I'm going to assume that the silence is out of sheer sheer surprise at what I just showed you guys. <laughs> Everybody's like, I'm looking at a weekly chart of Tesla from now on and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> and believe me, if that is all you do, you will literally won't have to do anything else. Do you let the longs expire? No, you let them make you money and then you get out. And if they don't make you money, obviously that means the price is moving in the opposite direction, but then you're Shorts are making you money. So, you know, two out of three ain't bad. As a, as a uh, movie president once said, <laughs> I think it was Jack Nicholson. <laughs> when to remove the short? Uh, when you see it start to trend in a particular direction. So here, this was this bar was our our uh, how shall we say main uh, the criteria for the trade. So and then after that we had a slightly bigger bar. So now when we get yet another bar which goes below the low of this bigger bar, that's when we know that the trend might be moving towards the downside. Even if you keep your short puts. It will still work, but you won't make as much money as you would if you bail out of your short put and let your long put just explode in value. And this explosion is not like a minor explosion. We are talking about $1 getting to $10, $11, $12 kind of explosions. And as I just said, feel free to go into um, you know this option net explorer and check it out. And you will see that this happens over and over and over and over again. This is an inside bar. You buy a call 
and that strike here you buy a put at this strike and the call went from they said 630 two weeks later you reached a high of 707 high 697 you made money on that put and you will see this happen like see here is an inside bar completely within the previous bar. You buy a call, you buy a put. If you buy a call at 690, let's just say seven, you buy the 700 call and prices go to 882. Seriously guys, just go to that date. See how much your call will be worth when something like this happens. You just made money. Now here is another inside bar. You do the same damn thing all over again. You buy, you buy a strangle and one side will make you money. Here is another inside bar. Here is, do you see any more? One, two, three, four. This would more or less qualify as an inside bar, but not like an A plus inside bar. I like A plus inside bars more. <clears throat> this would be a good inside bar, but still it's not within the body, but you still made money from 835 to a low of 2623. That's 200 points in two weeks. And you know, this is Tesla. Of course, we, there will be some of you will say, well, does this work on Microsoft? Well, let's have a look. This is a weekly chart of Microsoft. Nothing special, it's just Microsoft. Let us find an inside bar. Ah, here we go. Here's an inside bar. If you buy the 295 put seven, eight weeks out, prices went all the way to 281. So 295, so it went below in the money by $14. Here is the call, literally you buy the 290 call, it went all the way to 305. Your call is now in the money by 15 bucks. Here is another inside bar. Your call, 252 to a high of 305. Obviously you are not buying anything this many weeks out, right? Like you, if you buy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 weeks out. But this is a weekly chart. So yeah, you could say I will buy at least 10 weeks out. But now somebody was mentioning um, day trading early, right? Let's say you are day trading a five minute chart of the E-mini S&P. Let us look here. Do you see an inside bar? Let me make it bigger. Right here is an inside bar on a five minute chart of the E-mini S&P. You wait. In the next five minutes when prices, as soon as they go above this, or you wait until this entire bar ends, at the end of this bar, you buy the futures, one contract, at whatever this price is, what is the close? 4101.75. Let's say you got filled at 4102. So from 4102 to a high of 4137. That's 35 points. Let's say you just made 30 points. Each point gives you 50 bucks times 30. And this is in, hmm, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So in 30 minutes, in 30 minutes, you just made over a thousand bucks using only one thing. Now, guess what happens then? Nothing much happens on this side to the downside. We never get an inside bar at all, but then we get an inside bar right here at 11.50 a.m. Didn't go here. You have a buy order over here, 4117 to a high of 4120. Still made three points, 150 bucks. 
another inside bar, another inside bar. Look right here. This guy just made you a killing. Four one one five to four one two nine. Fifth, almost fifteen points. Another inside bar. And you will find millions of them. Let us look at. I know a lot of people like to trade the queues a lot. I myself trade the queues. Oh, there are some questions. <clears throat> No, you see which gets triggered and then go in that direction. But if you are trading options on futures, but again, why would you be trading options on a five minute chart? So, but if you are trading options on futures on a daily or a weekly or a four hour chart, then go ahead and buy calls and puts both. One side will be triggered and the side that doesn't get triggered, or, uh, but you still have the put, Son is a breakout strategy. No, no, no. I'm talking about the queues right here. Or on anything for that matter. You can do this on Shopify. You can do this on IBM. You can do this on the queues and SPY. You can do this on SPX. In the e-mini S&P, why even go with options? Just go with futures themselves and go only in one direction. So uh, Frank, yes, this is a sort of a uh, breakout strategy. So the E-mini future, he says, uh, let's do the E-mini futures first. So let's do the E-mini futures on a daily chart first, okay? <clears throat> so we look here and we find ourselves, like see this bar is completely inside the previous bar. So, If you will buy, you will place a stop limit order at whatever the high of this is, high is 8966.75 of this bar, the previous bar. So you will put in an order at 8967 and you will wait or you may just go ahead and place an order here. It's not executed. You have only placed the order. The order will get executed when prices reach the level that you requested in the order. So on this bar, on this week, since this is a weekly chart, you will get filled. And by the end of the week, you will be in a bit of a, you will probably be cursing me left, right, and center because it went the other way. But if you wait it out, you made a killing. Of course, to uh, to buy a futures contract on NQ, actually you should go to MNQ, which is the uh, micro. You know, you will enter at the breakout. Again, it depends. See, if you are trading a weekly chart and you have a very small account, better wait. Actually, if you are trading a weekly chart, you shouldn't be trading futures at all. You should be trading the queues. Seriously. Because here now you have a lot of leeway, right? If things don't work out, you are not going to get killed. You are not going to get a call from Toss saying, dude, you need to send us some money. Otherwise, we are going to close your account. So speaking of day trading, yes, let's suppose you are day trading the e mini or NQ, as we said earlier. But obviously, if you are day trading, you are not looking at a weekly chart, right? You are now looking at a five-minute chart or a 15-minute chart. So if you look at today, this is an inside bar, right? This bar began, it came down a little bit, then started moving up when it went above the high of this bar, or if you are conservative above the high of this bar, 
you buy. So you will buy at 127724. And then by the end of this bar, it reached a high of 765. So 25 to 65, you just made 40 points in under five minutes. You better get the hell out. If not, you should definitely get out over here. This was a green bar and it completely got erased and you say, I'm out. Then it turned into a red bar. And this brings us to the next strategy, which is known as the red bar high. This is a red bar high at the end of this bar, you place a trade at the low of this bar, it gets triggered and one, two and three bars, by the end of the third bar, you have literally gone from 12,750 down to a low of 699. Let's just say 700, you made 50 points in five minute bar. Something bad happened, this is today. What happened? This happened today. Then it went back up, by the way. So that's why it doesn't look too much. It says plus 47 here. But you could, this was one trade that you made money on. This was a red bar high. This was another trade that you made money on. And if you kept this, this was it. Otherwise, you know, if you are trailing your stop, you probably would have been out right over here because you are trailing. It went down from 7.53 to a low of 7.25, 25 points. <clears throat> and again, see, here is an inside bar. Look what happened. It dropped. Here is almost a good inside bar. Oh, this is a great inside bar, see? But this was pre-market. Remember, this didn't happen. But again, by pre-market, I mean pre-market normal hours. You can still trade this. You can actually enter the trade before 9.30. This is the futures. They are open 24 by seven, more or less. So European brokers, including, are not allowed to offer ETF. Uh, ETF, what do you mean? You mean uh, interactive broker? You cannot buy spiders on interactive brokers? Uh, I think that I think you wrong. can. Yeah, you can. I've done it. Yeah. Well, but again, you know, so yeah, go with micro CFDs work the same way. If you are outside this country and you need to, uh, okay, no, okay, there you go. So if you are outside this country, then yeah, you can you can do this on CFDs. You can do this on forex. I mean, literally, if you were to look at a five minute chart of Euro USD. You will see that there you go. Here is an inside bar. It first went down. That was a loss because then it turned around and went up. So you entered the long as well. And that is when you got out of the short at a small loss. And that long now more than recovered the loss that you incurred in the first brief couple of minutes of the trade. And um, of course, this is a five minute chart. Uh, it used to be, I used to have a lot of fun trading five minute charts a long, long, long time ago, but you will see And for those of you who know this ubiquitous spin bar, see this bar opened here. It was a huge green bar. And in under five minutes, the all the green was erased and it came back to neutral. It is moving down. And had you gone short at the low of this bar, you would have made a lot of pips. Six, zero, six, eight, eight. To zero six seven seven zero six seven one. Yeah, five minute chart. Still a lot of pips. Ah. 
it is not advisable or it is against the law. I mean, don't listen to advice okay. given to you by people who have never traded in their entire life. But if it's the law, then max 20K loss is deductible. Okay, if, so it's not the law. But yeah, you can you can go with uh, micro contracts in in uh, in forex. You can now even go with micro contracts in the e mini S and P. Instead of ES, you can go with MES, which is the micro e mini uh, futures. I like the micro ES. Yeah, micro is cool. It's also a great uh, great opportunity to learn. Now, see, this is a red bar high. Guess where the uh, prices are going to go? I still have two more minutes left to go. This is not really a good time to trade because uh, if you are day trading, you should not trade after 11 a.m. But I was just going to show you, but in this case, I should literally take my own advice and not trade at this point in time. But had you started early in the morning at 9.30, here is more or less a complete inside bar. Had you gone here, 4145, two bars later, or even literally by the end of this bar, you are out because it reached a previous level of resistance. You're like, okay, it's going to come back down. I'm up. Then you wait. This is a red bar high. At the end of this bar, you go short and you make money again. And now you are completely and totally done. It's only 10, 10 a.m. in the morning if you are on the East Coast. If you are somewhere in the middle, it's only 9, 10 or 8, 10. You have the entire day in front of you. Go out and have a ball. And that is why, for example, uh, if you are a long-term calendar trader, right, like the way I am, if you were to go to a weekly chart, right, and you see this, a red bar high on Microsoft. I mean, literally, it's like, holy smoke, right? So, on that Friday, uh, it's 327. The price is close to, what is the close? Close is at 329.68. So I literally go to 325 or even 320 and buy me a calendar. And the next day it comes and touches my calendar and I am up by at least 5% the next day. Then it moves against me. And a lot of people will panic. But at this point in time, you just roll your short put forward, right? Because that short put just made you a lot of money on this day. You roll it forward by seven days, you collect the cash, and then this happens and you make money. Then this happens, you roll it again. <laughs> Remember, this is a weekly chart. No, not necessarily, but if it is, that's even better. For example, this is a red bar high. It is not an engulfing uh, candle, but the next two candles are still down. Uh, this is a weekly chart. I'm not seeing much. See, this is a red bar high. It is not an engulfing candle. It went down quite a bit. This is a red bar high. It went down quite a bit. So again, you know, we tend to make things very, very complicated. By we, of course, I mean you guys. And, you know, 20 years ago, I was a part of the group that is you guys. And when I realized that I'm telling you, like, you know, when you drive a car or you fly a plane, Driving a car is like a hundred times more difficult than making money in the stock market. 
and I just proved it to you. If nothing else, you can like, for example, PayPal, remember PY, let me show you something. In PayPal, you will see these red bar highs, like there is no, see red bar high, it went down. Another red bar high, it went down a lot. Red bar high, it tanked. Tank, 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 tank. And in between you got, you know, red bar high, red bar high, red bar high, red bar high. I mean, since the, since July 26 of 2021. So we are talking about literally almost an entire year. You could have had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, two bar, red bar, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 15 trades and every one of them was a winner. And this is just in PayPal. I bet you um, that other guy, Shopify, went from about a thousand down to 300. Look, this is a red bar high. On 11.19, you had a red bar high. And if you had just bought a long-term put way out of the money, you would be sitting on more cash than you can actually imagine. But red bar high, red bar high, red bar high, two red bar highs, red bar high, 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 red bar high. Had you known this strategy on 11-19 of last year, right now you would not be in this meeting. NVIDIA, red bar high. I mean, is it even possible to miss this? Seriously. you enter at the low of the bar. If you are trading options, you are literally buying a put at the end of this bar at 3.55 p.m. on 11.22, which is literally right before Thanksgiving. Price is at 3.18. I would literally go to 3.05 or even 300. So go six months out, and buy the 300 put. And on every day that you get a green bar, you sell a put or you keep the puts sold put over here. In other words, convert that individual put into either a calendar or a credit diagonal or a debit diagonal. Or may, I mean, hey, if you are really into butterflies, put on a bearish butterflies 30 days out. That butterfly would have cost you, especially on a day like this, that butterfly might have cost you like five cents. And 30 days later, that butterfly is now literally worth a hundred bucks. Over here, what does this say? The law says to separate the winning trades from losing trades. Ah, okay. Well, I would recommend that you get out of Germany. In fact, uh, Tom just did, <laughs> right, Tom? What's that? <laughs> Didn't you just move out of Germany last year? <laughs> uh, three years ago. Three years ago. Okay, sorry. Well, it feels like it was last year when we were talking about uh, uh, 
Actually, we left Germany five years ago. We went to Portugal for a year, then Belgium for a year, and then we moved here three years ago. Oh, okay. Uh, so I mean, we've uh, been moving around. Well, Frank is complaining that taxes in Germany are shitty. They are. They're terrible. Uh, <laughs> so Rahul is saying, can you explain the red bar high trade again? Well, you see a red bar. You are now bearish on NVIDIA. Buy a put, sell a call spread, short the stock, do whatever you have to do to ensure Get negative that delta. deltas are negative. Yes, that's it. And now you can add to this trade, right? Most professionals, they don't just place a trade and get out, place a trade and get out. They have multiple trades going on in the same underlying. So you buy a put 30 days out, on a green bar, you sell a put against the long put that you just bought on this inside bar, you would wait. This goes all the way over here. You will now resell up or move, roll the put. On this huge red bar, you will now buy another put. Whenever you see a signal like a red bar high, you know it's going to go down. You buy another put on this day. On this day, you will buy another put somewhere over here. On this day, you will buy another put somewhere over here. Uh oh. One second. It is so strange that my phones always ring when I'm in the meeting. Always. Murphy's Law. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, literally, if, if this is all you do, you have NVIDIA, you have PayPal, select a couple of other ones, and you literally don't have to do anything at all. You just look at the bar, but you don't know it's a, it's a high bar till a few bars later. No, you know that this is, this made the high at 4 p.m. You know that this is a red bar high. It's the highest high of the last few bars. So at 3.50 p.m. Eastern time, you would enter the trade. On 12.28, at 3.40 p.m., you would enter another trade. You would buy a put somewhere over here. Same thing on 1.4. Same thing on 1.12. Uh, this is an uptrend right here. This is a huge uptrend in NVIDIA. I would say it worked. <clears throat> Kiran is saying, but you would not know that for a couple of days till it breaks down. Uh, but we are not waiting for the breakdown. Remember? This is a bar at 4 p.m. This bar literally looked like this, right? Five minutes before 4 p.m., I'm buying a put, the 300 put, 30, 40, 50, 60 days out. That's it. This is a red bar high at the end. Like for example, today is not a red bar high, but if it was, we would know it's a red bar high literally at by 3.30 p.m. So, okay, you could not make it. Something happened, you were busy with other things. So this is a red bar high, you saw it at 7 p.m. Tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m., place a trade. Buy a put, 60 days out. Now, look what happened here. This is a red bar high.
but prices never moved below the low of this bar at all. So if you were to wait until it comes down to the low, yeah, it would help you. But this, this was a mind boggling trend to the upside for whatever reason. And what, what are we looking at? Oh, NVIDIA, okay, I thought it was uh, SPY. Can you use a particular, hold on, let me answer all the questions. How much red does the bar need to be? It might be a red bar high, but it doesn't matter. If it's a red bar high, essentially it is. it was bullish and in the middle of the day, it turned bearish, end of story. And an object moving in a certain direction continues to move in that direction unless an equal and opposite force is applied. You know that, Rahul, right? So don't sweat those little things, literally. If it is a red bar high, buy a put. And 99 times out of 100, it will work out. And the one time it doesn't, you say, oh shit, I was wrong, and you bail out. I mean, we are wrong. I'm wrong every time I get behind a wheel of the car. I get lost even in my own neighborhood, literally. <laughs> and I enjoy it. I see sites that I've never seen before in my own neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> and Sergberg is asking, when do you close the put? Ooh, whenever you have made money or when you have lost in 20% of it. Even if you say, okay, if I make 20%, I'm out. Hey, you, you went in on this day. Hell, even if you went in on the next day, two days later, you are out. You made your 10, 15% anyway. But I keep my 10, 15, 20% only when I trade calendars. When I'm trading directional trades, I am like, hey, Lord knows how far it could go down, right? So I am mitigating it by converting a straight put into either a calendar or a diagonal. So now I'm making money on the long and the short. On every red bar, I'm making money on the shorts and on every green bar, I'm uh, sorry, on every red bar, I'm making money on my long put and on every green bar, I'm making money on my short puts. And then you rinse and repeat. And then you do it again, and then you do it again, and then you do it again until it gets boring. And then you come talk to me and I'll show you another strategy. That's one way of doing things. <laughs> but again, this will, I mean, even, even in stocks that don't really move much, you know, like, uh, like J and J, right? We know J and J doesn't really move much. Because it's you know very see it it has literally moved from one fifty five to one eighty six just thirty dollars in quite a while, but here you will see see this red bar high, and J and J goes from one seventy one to a low of one fifty five. See red bar high, it goes down, and this is a daily chart. If you look at a weekly chart. See, red bar high, it went down, red bar high, this is also a pin bar. So for it to move from 179.9 .9 to a low of 172 in two weeks, that's a huge move for J&J. But since you are option traders, hey, look at NDX. Not, uh, even if you look at a weekly chart of NDX, look at this. On this Friday, go 20 points above this guy and sell a call spread. Now your deltas are negative. And sell a call spread literally just expiring next Friday. You literally, for that 5-point or a 10-point wide spread, or even a 25-point wide spread, you literally collected. I have on a 5-point wide spread, literally collected like two bucks. Jay is not Kiran is asking, so the next day makes a higher high, we get out after the red bar high 
uh, you that will happen very very rarely and yes you you do get out but at the end of the day now remember if it makes a higher high not intraday if at the end of the day you see that it's a higher high and it closed above then you get out because who knows most of the times by the end of the day things will have changed after the red bar high, you will literally see that things, by the end of the day, it is still a red bar. It, it does work, but not all the time. Uh, so on the green bar low, the probabilities are about 60 to 70%. But over here, we are talking 95%. So like, look at this. See, this is a green bar low right here in NDX. Then it moved up, came down, green bar low, moved up, came down. It is not a green bar low, still moved up, not a green bar. This is a green bar low, it moved up. But see, this is an inside bar. Remember, we talked about inside bars. So depending on which way it goes, you sell something on the other side. So yeah, you could work uh, on, a, on a green bar low as well uh, as a red bar high, but the red bar high is has a significantly higher probability of... Uh... So again, as I say, rarely will you see it make a higher high, but you don't worry about higher highs. If it closes higher or is about to close higher, then yes, get the hell out. For example, here, right here, this is a red bar high, but you do not enter the trade immediately at the end of the bar. You will enter the trade only when it takes out the low of this bar, but the low of this bar, it never even came here. So you are not short, you haven't bought a put. Instead, it went up above. But then here we have an inside bar. So now you are saying, oh, it can either go up or down. So now you are preparing yourself to say, okay, I'm going to buy me a call over here and a put over here. But because NDX is very expensive, I am going to wait, right? I'm going to wait because I don't want to buy a put 30 days out in NDX, which is going to cost me like 330,000 bucks. So I'm going to wait and then it moved above this but then it came out to be a red bar high. So you would be like, oh shit, what if it comes down again? So you wait again. And then over here, you get a normal green bar. But the real issue here is that after this bar, two whole weeks have gone by and you have completely forgotten about NDX by now, <laughs> right? <laughs> I know I would have. But Instead of looking at NDX for these particular kind of things, look at the queues, look at uh, smaller time frames, look at SPY, look at Tesla, look at Twitter. If you look at Twitter on a weekly chart, you will be amazed. See, this is an inside bar. When it goes below the low, whatever the price is here, 53.33, you buy the low here, so you buy the 51 put, and one, two, three weeks later, it's down to 44.99. Now you sit back and relax. Here is another inside bar. Here the, our, our long got filled and two days later, our short also got filled. Then the short made money and then the long made money as well. So when you see this sort of a chop going on each bar within the previous bar, even if you make 10% on your, on your call and your put, you just bail out and say, hey, okay, so I made only 10%, who cares? Still better than nothing. See, uh, nice, beautiful inside bar. And then above the high of this from 40 to 80. And that's just the stock. How much would your options make? in a case like this. If you are a day trader here on a five minute chart, you can see this happening here as well. This is obviously after hours. See, this was a red bar high right here today. 
this was an inside bar. If it goes above this, you buy 100 shares of Twitter. If it goes below this, you sell 100 shares of Twitter. From 40.23 to a low of 40.16, you made seven cents. If you had a, a thousand shares, you just made seven thousand cents, which is 70 bucks in under five minutes. Did that make sense? Have I confused all of you yet? So Mike is asking, so you're waiting for the close of the red bar and then enter if the red bar falls below the low of the red bar. If you are a conservative trader, yes, that is the way to do it. So the inside bar occurrence is the same thing. You place a trade. So let's say, where were we earlier? NVIDIA, we're looking at uh, not a five minute chart. We're looking at a daily chart. We're looking at NVIDIA. And here is an inside bar, right? This bar, well, not, okay, this is actually a better inside bar. This bar is completely inside this bar. Let me make it bigger. See, this is an inside bar, yeah? This bar is completely inside this other bar, previous bar. So now mm, you will buy a call at the 230 strike, or if you are even more conservative at the 234 or the 235 strike and the 210 strike or the 208 strike, depending on whether NVIDIA has uh, individual, uh, you know, but bottom line, you will have a strangle here or here, and then it moves up. The only reason that I'm saying that buy a, a strangle over here and here is because it'll be a whole lot cheaper. You could just buy a strangle at the high of this buy a call at the low of this buy a put. You can do that too. But now it'll be a little bit more expensive because you are closer to the money on either side. Or you can just say, okay, this is NVIDIA. We know it moves up X dollars uh, on a weekly basis. So I will, whatever number is here, I will just, so it is 226. I'll just go to 230. Down below it is 222. So I'll go to 220. I'll buy the call, I'll buy the put, and then I walk away. And then the next day, your put starts, on the very next day, your call starts making you money. Then it erases all the gains and the puts, the next day, the puts start making you money. They continue to make money a little while over here and then it starts to go up. You can either choose to keep this put or take your profits or if it is a long-term trade, now sell a call and a put and convert the whole thing into a double calendar or a double diagonal or whatever it is that you care to do and then you wait. The majority of the trading game is the waiting game. If you can do that properly, you are okay. Use the toss pattern function to identify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can do many, many, many things. I, I believe it, it's a, too much of a hassle for me to sit down and write three lines of code. But I mean, if you look at NVIDIA, look, look at the daily chart. Red bar high, it makes money. Red bar high, it makes money. Red bar high, it made money. Red bar high, red bar high, red bar high. All you need is five, six of these. That's it. Even if you can write some code, are you going to go through like what? 20,000 underlines? Why bother? There are stocks that are $5 stocks, right? You are not going to, if you are an options trader, you are not interested in those things to begin with. I mean, you can literally just go to uh, the Russell 2000, the Russell 1000. It's very strange, the Russell 1000, it does. But, you know, if you are looking at a NKTR, whatever the hell, Nectar Therapeutics, oh wow. Check this out, red bar high. At the end of the day, 
even if this thing does not have any options, you just short 100 shares. It goes from 1660. The next day, it goes to a low of 1235. Let's say it goes to 1260. You just made four bucks on a thousand shares. That's four grand overnight. Red bar high from 1579 to a low of 929. And this is a daily chart, right? Red bar high, 18 to 13. If you were to look at a weekly chart, I don't even think that this may have, oh wow, look at this. From the red bar high, 36 to a low of 16. <laughs> this was 624, 2019. Had you taken this trade, you would not be here right now. And I would not have even missed you because <laughs> I know you are having fun out there. So did that make sense? Or have I just confused you even more than I wanted to? In which case, I am even prouder of me than I would have been otherwise. Wow. Suddenly, I don't, there is I don't see silence. Yeah, crickets. You don't see what? Crickets? Uh, oh, cr crickets. That's, that's, just, that's all you hear, the crickets. <laughs> Cricket, okay. <laughs> So Kiran is saying, what if a stock is in a continuous uptrend for options trading? Name a stock, if not today, maybe six months ago was in a continuous uptrend. And we will look at it. There is no such thing as a continuous uptrend. We humans are unable to sustain anything continuously. We have to stop, slow down, take a few deep breaths. And some of us need to do it a whole lot more often than some other ones. And even over here, other things now come into the play. See, this is a two bar pin bar. If you combine this last bar and superimpose on top of this one, it is a complete candle or just a wick. It's a big, tall wick. And then it goes from 13 down to three. <laughs> Nectar therapeutics should they should only be selling nectar. If they are just selling nectar as in honey, they probably might be making more money right now. I mean, seriously, if you, I mean, I don't look at too many things, but you know, you guys know more about the different kinds of stocks that are out there. Uh, name a stock. Give me the name of a stock that I have never heard. And believe me, I have not heard most of these names. This is the first time I'm hearing about nectar uh, therapeutics. So I just say, okay, let's look at Nike. We all have heard of Nike, right? Red bar high. 141. So you buy the 140 put or even the 135 put. It goes up a couple of times. If it goes above this high, you just bail out of your put and say, okay, this didn't work. But it never went here. And then it went all the way down to 129. Same thing over here, red bar high. You buy the 140 put and it goes down to a low of 125.51. Red bar, oh, this was the coronavirus thing itself. So here, red bar high, 101 down to 60 in less than 10 weeks. So, I mean, literally you can just type in something here and say Spotify technologies, right? Look, oh, look, Spotify, red bar high. It was a 387, 
that week it went all the way down to 294. You go out and buy, let's say the 250 put, 10 weeks out. Hell, if you don't want to do weekly, do daily. 305, red bar high on this day, you go to a previous level of resistance or just a previous nice round number, 295, you go to say 290 or 285 and buy a put. That put, you should still be in that put. And that's not all. Now you add to that put over here, buy one more put, around six months out. Buy one more put, six months out. Buy one more put, six months out. By this time, you are out of these guys already with a profit and out of these guys. On somewhere around here, you are out of these guys. Somewhere over here, you are out of this guy. Somewhere over on this day, you are out of these guys. Somewhere over here, you are out of this trade. Somewhere over here, you are out of this trade and you are enjoying your summer right now. Masood says, Vichy, KG, oh, these are the stocks. Vichy properties, okay, and KGC. Oh, he, oh, there you go. This was a red bar high two days ago. Had you bought a put? The 30 put. Also remember, you need to look at the volume, okay? If this guy has rarely not too much volume at all, you are going to get in trouble. And what was the other one? KGC. Oh, wow. Red bar high from 633 down to 392. Red bar high from 685 to 489, and here is the pin bar long. So you could literally have bought it at 509 and took it to 583. Once you enter with a put on a red bar high, what is your exit strategy? Uh, well, the main exit strategy is to walk away with millions of dollars which I have not yet been able to fulfill, but you decide, it's your strategy. You can say, hey, if I make 20% on my put, I'll bail out. Some will say, if it's a weekly chart that you are looking at, aim for 50%, 60%, 80%. Sometimes uh, in stocks like Shopify or that other one that we just saw, Spotify, it will do, it will move down real fast. Look in, this is 11.2 to 12.1. So 30 business, 30 days total, which means 22 business days. No, in this case, less than 22 because Thanksgiving comes in the middle as well. So maybe only 20 business days. In 20 business days, Spotify went from 296 to 224, say 226. It went down by 70 bucks. 296. Let's just say 300. $70 is literally one fourth of 300. 25%, the stock itself lost 25% of the value. Your put made you at least 25%, at least, if not more. And this is, if you had an at the money put, if you had an out of the money put, you probably made two, 300%. You should check it out. Go into uh, one of your uh, in trading view or option at Explorer and see what happened. In fact, just look at Spotify and take every damn trade that happens here. 
on this uh, and do it in option at explorer and just you know use a 10k account and out of 10k every time you get a signal you are only spending 500 bucks in buying a put that's it that's all you are willing to do and see how much you make in one year or more Having less than 10 indicators is un-American. Uh, I would agree with you there, but I am perfectly okay. Making a ton of money is very American. <laughs> so I'll take that part. You know, always go for the positive, not the negative. So James is troubled. How can you know there won't be a higher green bar tomorrow? Well, see, first of all, I am an Indian, so I have gypsy blood in me. That's number one, which is how I know. Secondly, I also know because there is, a, uh, there is an entire science called statistics and probability out there. And I almost did my PhD in that until I realized that I was just wasting my freaking time and got the hell out. It piled higher and deeper for what, right? Oh, right, exactly. So, I mean, I was, the tuition was being paid for. I had a full scholarship. I just chose not to go because I'm like, I'm done with schools, <laughs> period. So, I mean, literally look around and see how many times, and yes, once or twice, or maybe even three times in your life, it will happen, but it definitely won't happen three times in a row. Literally, I can get, in fact, it has never happened to me three times, even twice in a row in one underlying so far. The only way that you will not be troubled is if you actually do it. Because remember, if I buy a put, and I spend X dollars and I end up making five X. The next time I spend X dollars and if I lose those X dollars, will I care? No, right? It's like saying you are troubled because you are about to go uh, into a tennis tournament and what if you lose? Chances are you will. At some point in time, you will lose, right? But so what do you do? Do you stop playing tennis? You aim to get better, right? So the goal here is not, see, even if I am short, if I buy a put here, the next day, if prices go about this high, I am out of my trade. So I lost a little bit. It was a put. It was a put six, eight, 10 weeks out. So the next day, if prices go, price goes all the way over here, my put has lost like maybe 1%, maybe less, I don't know. Or because I'm a calendar trader, if there is a green bar, now I will sell a put. I will convert my individual put or a single put into a calendar or a diagonal. So yeah, if I, and if you look at it that way, I have never had a single loss in my entire life. All right, Amancha, I think we would probably need to wrap it up pretty soon. We've gotten uh, almost an hour and a half. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Time flies. <laughs> yeah, time flies. And I'm hungry now. Now that you told yeah. me it's 12 30. <laughs> yeah, so it's lunchtime. Yep. I got to eat. Okay, guys. So if you have any questions, feel free to. <laughs> MJ saying, keep going. <laughs> uh, we, we can do another one, but we need to stop this one because it's getting a little bit long in the tooth, as they say. Yes, it is. All right, guys. So it was fun mm, talking to you all again. I hope <laughs> you go out there and make some serious cash. Now, before we go, I know. Hamancha, we had talked about doing a technical analysis uh, workshop. Is that something you still would like to do? Well, certainly. If uh, folks are interested, yeah, no problems. Okay, looks like we have a yes, please. So 
Uh, let's talk uh, after lunch or maybe tomorrow and then uh, figure out uh, the way forward for that. Okay, sounds good. All right. Well, thanks everyone for coming. Okay. Thanks, Amanshu. Uh, always a pleasure. Likewise. All right. And uh, well, again, Hamanchu, Hamanchu runs training group seven on Tuesday. So if you want to get uh, more Hamanchu wisdom, uh, just tune in to training group seven every week. Which is, what is today? Today is Tuesday, right? Uh, today is Wednesday. He had it oh. yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> <laughs> but so you're I hungry. So. Need to. <laughs> uh oh, somebody's calling me again. All right, guys. See you all. All right. All right. We'll see you guys. Okay. Bye. Bye.